Hello everybody, it's Andrew Hutchings here, and I just read a uh, article about some female long distance runner testing positive for nandrolone and getting a four year ban from the Olympics. Her name was Shelby something something. And I'm just gonna give you my take on that. She says, it's from pork that I ate. The pig had DECA in it, and I ate it, and it was in my system, and it showed up on the drug test. How likely is that? Well, first, you have to ask, who's giving pigs DECA? I mean, you could give them NPP as well, or some other ester of nandrolone. But number one is, how often are pigs treated with nandrolone? Now, personally, I don't know. I know some cattle are given anabolic steroids to help with meat production. I haven't heard of them using nandrolone. I've heard of them using trenbolone and growth hormones, uh, but not nandrolone. So that's interesting. And then after that, you have to ask, even if there was nandrolone in the pork she ate, how much of it is going to be intact after it's cooked? Because when you cook something, especially if you were to barbecue it, where you have like open flame, um, but regardless of how you're cooking, it's gonna be under high temperatures. High temperatures break down molecules. So on top of the fact that there would only be a little bit in there to begin with, some amount of it, possibly a lot of it, or most of it even, is going to be broken down by the heat of cooking it. Now, if you did some sort of slow roast, then perhaps a lot of it would remain intact. Um, but some amount of it is going to be destroyed in the cooking process. Then after that, you have to ask, when you get that little bit of nandrolone, and you consume it orally, and it goes into your stomach, how much of that makes it into your bloodstream, and how long would it stay in your blood? Now, if you orally consume nandrolone that was given to a pig to help it produce more meat, let's assume that the pig had injections, or it could be some sort of implant, um, but whether it's an implant or an injection, Actually, it doesn't really matter whether it's esterified or not. Taken orally, the bioavailability is very low. So now we've got the fact that the amount in the pig was probably low to begin with. You cooked it, making it even lower. You ate it, and not very much gets into you. And then on top of that, however much gets into you from eating it is rapidly metabolized and excreted. It's not going to show up a week later, mostly. I mean, I can't say with absolute 100% certainty, but it's probably not even going to show up a couple days later. It's probably only going to show up for like a day or two. I mean, who knows? Maybe a few days. Maybe if you're the most unlucky person in the world and you got the weirdest body chemistry and you got the pig with the absolute most gigantic quadruple ten times large dose of DECA and you did a slow roast and you have a weird stomach and you absorbed a lot of it and you don't break it down quickly somehow then maybe it would stay in you like a week but when you orally consume steroids they don't stay in you very long especially when they're not the kind that survive first past metabolism very much because you only get a little tiny bit of it actually into your system to begin with. So am I buying it that she tested positive because she ate pork? Well, there's a simple way to double check. Test her a couple days later. If she tests positive again, the chances of it being from the pork go from, I mean, let's say that this is already like really, really low and like way up there. It goes slim to none. And if you want to be really sure, test her like a week later. If she tests positive a week later, 
I mean, if you want to be super sure, test her two weeks later. I mean, because even if she took the shortest Esther, I mean, well, I mean, they could make shorter Esthers, but like, say she took the shortest normal Esther of Nandrolone, which is NPP, Nandrolone Phenyl Propionate. It's probably going to be detectable for up to two weeks. I mean, if you have really sensitive testing, you could probably detect it that long. And that's when it's meant to get into your system and survive and stay in there for a while. Uh, the way she did it, it's probably only if, if somehow she got an, a significant amount into her, which is already super unlikely, as I explained, it's not going to stick around long. So test her like a couple days later, test her a week later be, to be ultra sure. But yeah, it's probably not from the pork. If it is, you might want to find out what pork she's eating, because then you can eat it and get steroids. Maybe it will make you a better runner. Um, I also found it interesting that she chose to use Nandrolone. As you see, I'm talking as if she used it, and it wasn't from the pork, because it's like 99.9% .9 chance that she used it, and it's not from eating pork. Yeah, interesting choice that she used Nandrolone. At first I was surprised, but then I thought, you know, maybe because uh, distance running puts a lot of uh, strain on your joints and, and it's really bad for you, actually. Maybe the progestogenic effects help lubricate them a little bit more and help with the, that damage. Yeah, someone I know who was a professional athlete ran a marathon one time and it destroyed his knees. He said he would never do it again. And he was a pro football player. So yeah, perhaps that's why she chose an Andrelon, but also I would expect some water retention off it. Not a ton, but to some degree, which would increase her weight, making it hard to run distance. That, that's why I found it a little bit strange, but who knows, maybe she's taking other drugs along with it to limit the water retention. But that's not the topic of this video. Basically, it's extremely unlikely that it came from the pig. I'm not going to repeat the whole process of why. Just go back to the beginning of the video if you want to hear it again. I hope you like this video. I'll include her name in the title since I don't remember it exactly. Uh, please help me out by giving me a like and a subscribe and a comment. Share it with your friends. Um, you can hire me for training, advice, consultations, plans, etc. I'm happy that I weighed in at 176 pounds today. Um, you can hire me for diet consultations, plans, coaching, etc. Supplement, everything, same. Uh, but not medical advice, because I cannot give medical advice because I'm not a licensed physician. I've got this awesome medal that I got from getting my degree from the University of California, Irvine. Uh, but it's not a medical degree. So I would get in legal trouble if I gave you medical advice. So instead of giving you medical advice, I will just find the pre-existing medical information, consolidate it, put it all in one place, present it to you along with my opinion as a scientist, not as a doctor, not as a licensed physician, just as a normal person, a non-licensed physician, science person. Um, and yeah, I'll give it to you in a way that you can understand it. And if you don't understand, you can ask questions and I can explain it to you a little bit differently. I'm very good at explaining things to people that don't have any science background or, or minimal science. Or if you have a lot of science background, you can still hire me and I'll still help you with it. I mean, just because you have science background doesn't mean you're an expert on certain things. Uh, so yeah, I hope you like this video. Check out my other videos. I got like 250, so you got to click on my icon. Maybe search for keywords in the search bar or just scroll, scroll, scroll. My Instagram is natural underscore true underscore fitness. My website is andrewhutchings.org.